Hey everybody, this is Raul for Bass Musician Magazine and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist Frankie Poulin coming to us directly via Skype from the UK. So, great to have you here Frankie. Tell us, uh, we always like to start getting to know you a little bit. Tell us about your bass journey. How did you get started in bass? How did I get started with bass guitar? Um, well, I took up pretty late, um, as you can probably tell by my uh, rudimentary style. Um, I didn't actually really start playing until I was uh, 19. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, I suppose I was into kind of underground, uh, late 80s stuff, you know, in the UK, you know, all that kind of uh, generation of. Uh, Smith's New Order, Echo and the Bunny Man, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And That's so, what got me into music, yeah, the alternative. Got you. So the attraction to the music drew you in, kind of sucked you in, and did you just kind of jump into it and start kind of like baptizing by fire, playing, and you know, starting to gig and stuff? Um, it took me about. Yeah, yeah, in fact, you're right, yeah, Baptism of Fire, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, playing pretty uh, simple kind of stuff. Um, I think the first song I ever played live was um, a Cure song, actually. It was a cover of a Cure song, and I think it was uh, Shake Dog Shake by The Cure. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, the Cure had the live album that was out that was pretty good and the live version of Shake Dog Shake was as well as being very simple was uh, quite powerful you know so mm -hmm. yeah wasn't the first stuff I was into I mean this first stuff I was into was probably uh, more main mainstream 80s stuff like Adam and the Ants and uh, The Police you know mm -hmm. that's the first album I ever bought actually was uh, uh, Regatta de Blanc by The Police mm-hmm so I'm guessing that you you know started playing with bands. I know you you uh came into it and of course I I maybe neglected to mention that you play with the darkness. I sure do. I play with the darkness. Since um well I was friends with Dan Hawkins, the darkness rhythm guitarist, uh, for um quite a while actually, since the late nineties. Mm-hmm. And gradually, his brother uh, would come to visit London from Lower Stoft, which is where the brothers are from. And uh, we started to incorporate him into the band as well. Got you. And you were with the band for a while, and then you left around 2005. You had a, had a kind of a hiatus there. And then the band got back together in 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and got back together. Yeah, there was a five years when the band was out of action. Um, I kind of uh, left uh, during the making of the second album. There was quite a lot of upheaval and relationships broke down in that period. There was a lot of stress gotcha. with the pressure of the first album was so successful trying to follow that up you know mm -hmm. so that was a period with the and then justin left left uh only about six months after that you know so the second album campaign was um wasn't too successful really happens you know when um when you come out with a really big album a hit album it's uh <clears throat> a lot of bands kind of come unstuck, you know, in the album that follows that. You know? mm -hmm. Well, it's a success is a hard act to follow because the expectations are high. Now, speaking of new albums, you guys are going to be releasing in October, uh, Pinewood Smile. Yep. That's our fifth album. So wow. since we came back, uh, uh, we did those first two albums, you know, the, Big album, the first one, the, the second one was the one where we come on, came on stuck slightly. Um, second album is um, maybe a little bloated sounding, a little bit overproduced, but it, it still has so many dimming features, I think. 
the comeback album was Hotcakes, um, which again has good and bad moments. Um, and I think we really hit our stride again with uh, Last of Our Kind, our previous album. Mm -hmm. And then now I think with Time and Smile, we're all guns blazing again. We've got Rufus Taylor on the drums, and I'm really enjoying playing with him, the son of Roger Taylor. Nice. Now, what can you tell us? I When I listen to your music, I get... It, and it's kind of interesting as time goes by because we've all... I get very much like a classic rock kind of feel, but I know at the same time you all are not trying to be classic rock, but nowadays it is kind of classic rock, if you will. So tell us about the, the, the general feel of the album. What what would you tell us? Um, <clears throat> well, the feel of this album... Uh, is, uh, it, you know, we don't really go in there with any contrived ideas. Um, a lot of what we do is egg each other on and uh, we dare each other to uh, do things because the last thing we want to do is be in the comfort zone. We, f we feel that where Classic Rock, uh, I guess, came unstuck is um, when uh, bands are, uh, when it loses its uh, rock and roll, if you like, is when bands are... Uh, too uh, comfortable and it becomes a bit too luxurious mm -hmm. you know the luxurious end of classic rock so we like to do to keep things kind of raw and also um irreverent irreverence is a very important uh, part of the equation for us because uh i think i, I feel that what's really kind of killed rock and roll is uh the um bands worshiping the past too much I feel personally that um, almost all interest in art comes from irreverence as a, as a starting point. Gotcha. Well, and there's been a little bit of a tease with the album because the two videos, uh, a, while, a short while back, all the pretty girls went live, and then just recently, Solid Gold. And there's definitely some irreverence <laughs> When it comes to the like the lyrics of Solid Gold, as I'm listening to it, going, "Oh, did they just were those really? Am I hearing the lyrics right? I, I I had to go back and listen again." Yeah. So they very much remind me of some of the videos we were seeing on MTV back in the heyday, in the strong days of music video. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well. Uh... Rufus, I guess, um, he's, had, he's an injection of youth and uh, golden youth into the equation. Gotcha. Um, and uh, vigor, um, enthusiasm. Uh, he's really added something for sure, you know, because the drums is the energy, dictates the energy of the band. You know, so. But he also actually contributed a lot in the songwriting as well. And on the album, there's a couple of duets with him and Justin. Nice. Uh, Rufus has got a lovely voice, a very warm kind of honey, honey timbre in his voice. Um, so, yeah, I would say this album is uh, probably our most uh, positive and uplifting since the first album. Very cool. Well, and it looks like you guys had a lot of fun doing the videos. Um, I will say on All the Pretty Girls... I was happy to see you didn't get in the water with your bass. I was cringing with the guitarist getting yeah. getting his guitar wet. I'm going, oh no! I'm I'm hoping that the bass is not going yeah. in the water. Well, I'm glad there wasn't a bass solo in that song. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't have taken one of my Gibson Thunderbirds in the water. No, Dan actually Dan actually found like a Les Paul copy. Obviously, um, I, I would like to say it was a Les, uh, it was a Gibson, but um, it wasn't. You know. It was a copy, but it still cost about three uh, th three hundred pounds. We, uh, we had to find a music shop, and because uh, we only decided the night before to do this, mm -hmm. so we had to find the music shop in Cornwall. Cornwall's uh, the peninsula in the um, southwest corner of England. So we had to um, go around all these little towns trying to find like a Les Paul copy, so we wouldn't have to go in there with a the Gibson. So Sorry. Dan would have to take take a Gibson into the water. 
And then we had to find a stunt double. We had, we had to find a surfer that had the same hair as Dan. Uh-huh. Maybe I shouldn't have given that away, but um, Dan actually gets in the water, but the guy that's actually surfing with a guitar isn't Dan. I would say it would be quite the skill set to be able to both stand on a surfboard and play the guitar at the same time. So oh, yeah. that, that's unique. Most most people will probably get that, yeah. Yeah, I was I was waiting to see if at the end of the video there would have been a disclaimer that said no no actual good instruments were harmed in the filming of this video like they do with the protection of animals. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. Very, very cool. And since we're talking about gear, you you're definitely notoriously a, a Gibson Thunderbird fan. Um yeah. was was one of those the, the notorious brown bastard bass? Yeah, the, uh, the Brian Bassett, I think, is the one I'm using in the Solid Gold video. Nice. And um, No, no, sorry. Let me correct that. Um, I'm using the, the Brian Bastard in the uh, Pretty Girls video. Mm -hmm. And in the Solid Gold video, I use a gold uh, 50th anniversary. Nice. Yeah, uh, which is a beautiful color and which just happened to be gold. So I mm -hmm. figured it was appropriate. Got you. And... You're a fan of Gibson basses and obviously the Thunderbirds. Tell us a little bit why why would you choose that instrument as your weapon of choice? I I identify with the Thunderbird because the Thunderbirds are very awkward. Uh, they're unbalanced. Um, they got long, fragile necks, mm -hmm. much like mine, <laughs> and um, they also they have a very awkward kind of, uh, sound, which is kind of. It's a bit ugly, but it's, it's got a lot of character. But um, it's also very rich and kind of boomy. And um, just all those things, the combination, I just find they've got so much personality, mm -hmm. which is what I love about the Gibson Thunderbirds. They're not to everyone's liking. Um, but I find you really have to grapple with them. And I enjoy that process. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle, and I enjoy that. Got you. And... Other gear wise, do you what other things do you have in your toolbox that help give you your voice and your sound? Um, less and less, actually, as time goes on. Um, I love the high watt. Mm -hmm. I've got a beautiful high watt head, which I love, and uh, I actually um, somebody stole my high watt uh, speaker. I had an eight by ten, and that was um, went missing after a festival, so oh, no. I couldn't find because uh, how about UK? I think have gone out of business, so I couldn't find the replacement one, and even on even second hand, I couldn't find ones. But then I, I went into this music shop and I had this really old uh, Ampeg cab um, from the seventies, um, I think. I think it's the late seventies, um, and it had been used by Genesis apparently back in the day. Um, and uh, um, I paired that up with the uh, um, high watt head, and the combination is just beautiful. I'm just so, so, so pleased with it. It's the perfect, it's the best sound I've ever had. Uh, just the really old speaker, I guess, because the wood is old, you know, it adds something to it. Mm -hmm. So that with the uh, high watt head, um, that's it. That's all I need. Nice. Yeah. simple and it has its you know characteristic sound and you you wield it well again i the i i had the opportunity to interview uh the author of the gibson book and yeah. with gibson's it's very much a love-hate kind of relationship because he was very outspoken about the shortcomings but he still really loves these bases and so it, it, it's very very kind of interesting that's exactly what I think about them too, yeah. And I love, I love some of the people that played them are such distinctive players, you know, like John Entwistle. Mm -hmm. And um, he's the one that springs to mind anyway. Got you. Well, and moving forward, with the darkness, with a new album coming up, the video teases, getting us ready for more. What's, what's coming up in the future? Touring? What can we look forward to? Yeah, we've got a couple of different signing singles that will come out gradually. Um, I guess we put out the rock songs first, but there's a couple of songs that are really going to surprise people. 
including one of them, which will probably be one of the duets between Justin and Rufus, will be a single, hopefully. And that's probably our first venture into uh, what you would call soul music, you know? Nice. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, is, is it okay if I walk and talk, by the way? Because I think I'm getting thrown out of this sure. place if I hold. Yeah. Um, it's a very quiet street here, by the way. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, we've got touring, we're going to be in the States um, early early next year, mm -hmm. and it's not yet been confirmed, but it's going to be um, the early part of next year, uh, but before that, we'll be doing uh, Europe and the UK. Gotcha. And if people want to find out about your touring, uh, to know if you're coming to a place near them... The best website, uh, where would that be? I've got the darknesslive.com. Uh, darknesslive.com is our website. And then, of course, uh, just look, um, search for us on Instagram and on Facebook using uh, the actual darkness. Gotcha. The actual darkness, yeah. I think Facebook is just the darkness official, actually, and Instagram is the actual the actual darkness. And then, tw and then Twitter is the same, yeah. Excellent. So we're, we're, yeah, we're on all the platforms. Very cool. Well, Frankie, I appreciate you taking time to chat with us today. And you're on the move and keeping it going, so that's very cool. Um, people, yeah. keep your eyes open for Pinewood Smile coming to you from the darkness. Lots of new videos. I'll, I'll include the links so people can see them. Uh, you've seen it live. Frankie Poulain. Coming to you here on Bass Musician Magazine. Cheers. Thanks, man. It's been a pleasure, yeah? Thank you. See you in the States next year, yeah? You bet.